so at this point, Osama bin Laden is a ghost. And I'm not, he's not even on my fucking radar. I, I was at the point, just being at SEAL Team 6, I, was, I remember thinking, I hope I get to meet the guy from Delta that kills bin Laden. That's, I, I, this is as close as I'll This is awesome. I hope I meet him. So like one of the big, we did a, um, we, the, the biggest thing we did on this one was we found an Al-Qaeda guy, Abu Iklis al-Masri or some shit like that, who was a tier one target in Korangal. And we did a snatch and grab on a, on a highway and got him. Um, <clears throat> this other strike team were, were doing, we're, we're doing stuff. One, one of the newer guys, first deployment with red team actually got six kills at once with a saw, which I thought like, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, but we're watching this, and but it's so this is uh, this is um, uh, January of 2011, and that's all we're doing, and, and you know trying to develop shit. But we're, I'm more planning uh, training trips for when we get back, making sure the guys on my team are running their trips the right way, where we're gonna go. And we we planned uh, the first um, trip back for my team, my troop actually was to go to Miami to dive, because our, our biggest concern is more piracy. The pirates have been ad ad adjusting to what we're doing. They had mother ships. Can we do open water dives on a ship that's not or a ship that is anchored? How do we find it? What can we do? And we're just coming up with shit. But we're done with deployment, and we're also in South Beach. So I want guys to have fun. We're going to train, but then we're going to go to happy hour. Yeah. You know, hang out on the beach, have some drinks, and then we're going to train tomorrow. And um, we were down there. We're staying at the Courtyard Marriott near South Beach. And we're outside. Well, before we went on this trip, our, our boss, the, the commanding officer, Red Squadron, was coming on the trip. And we're kind of like, well, that's a drag because we can't have as much fun with the CEO there. But he got pulled. They're like, yeah, he's got to go to D.C. for something. So we're good. And we didn't know why the CEO and the Master Chief went to D.C. But we're down there. And then my boss got a call, uh, my, my troop commander. And he said, hey, um, we got to go, ba we gotta go back to Virginia Beach. So pack your ship as soon as you can. We're going to get the first flights out of here. I'm like what the hell? All right, what's going on? Like, what the fuck, I don't know. So we f flew back um, to Virginia Beach, and they brought 28 of us into a room. Now we've got guys on different trips that got pulled in, senior guys from like uh, there was a, a rock climbing trip in Nevada, uh, but they got re the senior guys got got called in, and then other guys came in from Arizona, and then we're here. And other dudes are junior guys at SEAL Team Six are there, but they're not in this secret room, and they they said. Uh, all right, you guys are here because this is not a drill. Uh, this is real. We found a thing, and this thing is in a house. And this house is in a bowl, and this bowl is in a country. <clears throat> and you guys are going to you're gonna go get this thing, and you're going to bring it back to us and show it to us. And we're like, okay, no sweat. Well, first, we're wondering why us, but okay, well, what's the thing? Well, we can't, can't tell you. Okay, well, uh, how are we getting there? Can't tell you. What country is this? We can't tell you. How are we getting there? Can't tell you. How much air support? None. Like, all right, that's an answer. No air support. That's all we know. And they said also we, we we're not we're only bringing shooters. Only seals are going on this. Um, so we can't bring our kick-ass Air Force CCT the radio guys. We can't bring the PJs who are paramedics, or fucking medics. Just, so if you know any medical shit, you bring some medical shit. If you know how to use a radio, you're the radio guy. And uh, keep it light because we only have a certain. So we're like, what the fuck is going on? And so we would walk around. We're trying to get our shit ready. We 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 knew there would be two two birds. That's all we knew. We assumed it would be ospreys off of a flat top going into Libya, because the Arab Spring had just started, mm -hmm. and they're we're gonna go get Gaddafi, and they want inter to interrogate him. So we're gonna get him and bring. It's got to be that. But we we're walking down. We're in the new building where the, all of the cages are together on the bottom and we're running into guys from other squadrons and they're like, hey man, what? we heard something's going on, what's going on? And we're literally like, I have no fucking idea. And they they got mad at us because they thought we were lying to them. It's like, I, I and we'd run into them when we'd go out at night. Like, I, I, guys, I don't know what we're doing, but we're getting our shit ready. This went on until Friday and um, they said, okay, everyone go home, be with your kids, and you're coming back on Sunday and we're going to drive you somewhere <clears throat> and we're going to read you in on what this is. And we're like, okay, what's, who's going to be there at the read-in? And the tired bosses were like, oh, probably the vice president, the secretary of defense, the secretary of the Navy. And we're like, oh my God. And then they're going down the list. They said something, blah, blah, blah. They said CTC pad, blah, blah, blah. blah. They're going down the list. I'm like, CTC pad, that's CIA counterterrorism. 
uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan. If we're going to Libya, and I didn't say anything, but you know, we went home, hung out with the kids. We came back on Sunday, and they split us up into vans. We, we had four guys in my van. I got my buddy driving, my other buddy up front. My troop commander, my boss is right here, and then I'm sitting here. And I explained to them, on the drive down, we're going to somewhere in North Carolina, and I explained to them exactly what I just said here. And I said, um, this isn't Gaddafi. They found bin Laden. And my boss looked at me, and, and there was no cheers. He goes, that's exactly what I was thinking. So we just start talking about this. And uh, my buddy driving the van, I'll never forget the way he looked at me in the mirror. And he said, man, O'Neal, if we kill Osama bin Laden, I will suck your dick. <laughs> and we had a laugh about it. Then, um, you know, fast forwarding, obviously, three weeks to the day, we're looking down at bin Laden in his house. And I said, well... Now's as good a time as any, I guess. And he's like, oh, fuck you. And I'm like, your bet. But, <laughs> but we got down there and um, they, uh, they, they put us all into a room and um, the commanding officer of SEAL Team 6. So we each squadron had a commanding officer, but 6 was like a group. So that commander, that CEO came in. And <clears throat> I'll never forget the way he said, the reason you guys are here is this is as close as we've ever been to Osama bin Laden. And it, I mean, it, it sinks in, but there's, you know, we're professionals and we're like, Okay, are we going right now? We, I mean, we're ready. And they, they, they explained to us, they, they brought in the agency team, which is mostly women, and explained to us, they, they went into such depth of how they found him in these long briefs. We're all almost like, look, it, we believe you. I don't need to know this shit. Just you tell me where he is. I, I'll carry the gun and the sledgehammer. And um, they, you know, they were very cool the way they, they talked to us. And, and then they, had a, they told us that the president had, uh, he had about five options to get them. And they said, you know, obviously, um, carpet bomb the fuck out of it. And I think the Air Force wanted like 22 JDMs to make sure. And it's like, all right, Holy you're, you're going to kill everyone around. Yeah. So that's a, I mean, we'll never know if we got them. They, there was something of a, a they, they called him the pacer. They could see him walking outside. We can hit him with one bomb. But I mean, we know how that works. If you fuck up that one. You're, you'll, you'll never find him again. They, and we actually laughed at this one. They said, we can do a joint op with the Pakistanis. And everyone's like, oh, f yeah, tell them about it. Yeah. He's fucking out of there. Um, or you're an option. And then you guys can figure out a way. And so, you know, we're thinking everything jumping in. No, can't do this and whatever. And, and, um, but, and, and even the, the president didn't know about the, I guess the, the chief of staff of the Air Force said, well, there is one more option. And he told him about the, the helicopters that no one knew about. And so then we just started training, and that, that was an option. So we trained there. It wasn't to, uh, it was, you know, to obviously to get to know the, the exterior, but don't tell me about the interior. I'll, I'll figure that out when I get there. Don't, don't tell me there's seven men and 10 women and 16 children. You tell me how many people you think are there, and I'll figure out what they are when I get there type shit. And we're just kind of coming up with contingency plans. Uh, we wanted to prove to them, the powers that be, that we are a good option that we know what we're doing. And even even got to the point where uh, President Obama said, uh, I was never 100% convinced bin Laden was there, but I was convinced you guys could go in and find out and go, come home. And so we trained on that, and we th tried to think of contingencies, trying to brainstorm everything. Uh, you know, what if the cars leave? What if we get squirters? Who's doing what? Coming up to this. And, and then we would go back to the hotel or whatever we're staying at, and somebody at the CIA had made a two-scale model of bin Laden's house. I'm talking to the... Oh no shit! And so we're talking about it, um, just and we're you know we're training twelve hour days and talking about it every night and doing it over helos. Fat. I mean, we fast rope so much. I, I have severe uh, uh, tendonitis still um, from just grabbing that damn rope. Almost to the point, like, can we just simulate we fast rope? I know how to do it. I, I can fall. Yeah. <clears throat> but one night, um, one of the bosses said, "All right, what's the worst thing that could happen?" And the youngest guy in the room said. The helicopter could crash in the front yard. And we're like, what the fuck? Why would you bring that karma here? Yeah. And he goes, I don't know. Shouldn't we talk about that for 30 seconds? So we did that. And then we went out west to a, a, a certain place. And I, I, we were even to a point where, um, uh, I, like, I, I'm known for morale. I want to keep morale high, crack jokes, have fun. But guys were joking uh, around the table one night. And I said, you guys realize... This is a one-way mission. You should take this a little bit more seriously. We're, we're not coming back from this one. 
And then, yeah, they're like, yeah, you're, yeah, shit. And so we get out there though, and they brought us into the the you can, the movie Zero Dark Thirty kind of plays it right where the the seals walk in, they see those helicopters, and I remember I started laughing, and they're like, what's so what's so funny now? And I said, well, before I thought there was a ninety percent chance we're gonna die, but I didn't know they were sending us uh, in on transformers, <laughs> <laughs> and that was kind of, and it's like, well, these, I mean. And these things, someone designed it. Um, the pilots that came out, they gave us the four best pilots in the world, Army pilots. They had never flown these things, and they, we trained on those for four days. And then um, then we uh, went one more time home to see our kids, and then we forward staged to Jalalabad. Because if, they, if <clears throat> President Obama gives us the green light, um, we want to be right there. So, And, uh, you know, you still can't. And the reason they picked us is because um, we had a, a team already in Afghanistan, we had the National Mission Force, which is for a contingency. But if, if that team in Afghanistan stopped working and just started training, someone might notice. If the National Mission Force leaves, someone might notice. This squadron is supposed to be leaving. No one's going to care. That was us. So it's better to be lucky than good. So we went over there. There was a, a squadron over there. And we came in to do the bin Laden raid. And they knew it. Oh, can you imagine? And they, I'll tell you what, I cannot say enough good about them. I would have been, fuck you guys. We're SEAL Team Six, and we're, and you guys come to do it. They could not have been more welcome, welcoming to us. You know, I mean, they were pissed, but they, they were complete pros. Wow. And, um, and then we waited there. Uh, we, we would play poker with those guys, and they said we actually weren't fun to play poker with because like, fuck it, I'm all in too. I'm gonna die tomorrow. <laughs> 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 Just you know, dark humor. Uh, but then we did we did get the green light, um, and we're going to launch. We have Saturday or Sunday to launch because that's our um, 48 hours of 0% illumination. And if we miss that window, though, we've we got to wait 30 days. I mean, we're going in 0%. And we got lucky because the rumor was that bin Laden was, was going to leave on September 11th of that year to a new place. That's the rumor. It could be false, but that's what I heard. Um, so we got the green light. We didn't launch on Saturday because of the correspondence dinner. And um, we figured if, if um, the entire cabinet and the president are in a room with the entire press corps and they all get up and leave, the press corps is going to be like, huh, what's that all about? Yeah. And I guess even Hillary Clinton was like, wait, we're not launching on Saturday because of a deal. Fuck those guys. We're launching. Yeah. Which I, I mean, Hillary Clinton, you know, I'd never vote for her, but I'd take her in a foxhole. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then, yeah, we did on, so we did on Sunday. We're going to go Sunday and it's, it's, uh, it's 100% we're going. And we, we went to... Um, we went into a hangar to get the final brief. We're going over everything that we're going to do. And, and we, I mean, we're good. We, we know the exterior. We know who's supposedly there. We talked to the intel analysts. We, they're with us still in, in, J, in JBAD. And um, uh, Admiral Bill McRaven, he, he, he's given us the last speech. And he said, uh, you know, guys, last night I watched my favorite movie, Hoosiers. And the best part of that movie is when this team from Hickory, Indiana, makes it to the state championship and they walk into this gym and it's an arena and they're starstruck and they're just looking around and coach had um, one of the guys grab a tape measure and say, what's the distance from the back of the rim to the free throw line? He said, it's 15 feet, coach. All right, get on his shoulders, gets on his shoulders. What's the distance from the hoop to the floor? And he said, 10 feet, coach. And he goes, I'm sure you'll find these are the exact measurements in your gym in Hickory. This is just a bigger arena. And he goes, you guys do this every night. This is just a bigger arena. And then we were leaving. And I remember we went up to him and said, hey, Admiral, um, you're so fucking busy. I, I doubt you watched Hoosiers last night, but you were born to give us that speech right now. Yeah. And so then we left. We took a team picture. And then uh, uh, we had our gear on and uh, like, you know, said, uh, said goodbye to the guys that were there. And, and we, we actually... Um, you know, we're going with uh, the the shooters to the first two birds, and it's, you know, instead of uh, instead of like giving them a fist pound, it's giving the guys hugs, and it's like, I right, see you on see you on the on the ground, and and then you know we left. You do your last thing, take a piss or what? Like one of my concerns was how how are we going to pee um, on the way? I don't want to get out and have to pee. Like, and they actually someone came up with these little I don't know if they have them now. They're probably common. Those little diapers you unfold, you can pee in them. But I, I actually, I don't even trust these things. I'm peeing in a bottle and I'll throw up. I actually kept the damn bottle of piss in my pocket the whole mission. I forgot about it. I was pretty excited. I mean, th to the point where we were, um, we were, um, we were given 
access to everything. Like didn't even need to be approved for use yet. They'll, if if it works, uh, you can have it. And we, uh, but we're now we're measuring like we're trying to cut guys off for like you're too heavy. These two guys don't carry that because certain pounds of fuel to get there because we don't have refuel. It was that calculated. We were trying to keep it to to, to to that. Thirty-two minutes on the ground. We had a dude come in. This I don't remember what the hell he was trying to sell us, but he said, uh, "Here's this box." that uh, it jams everything. Like it jams cell, but like it can, it can jam landlines, it jams this shit and it, it weighs, and it's like the uh, um, a, a kilometer radius. Wow. And one of the guys goes, has it been tested in a helicopter? And he goes, mm, no. And he goes, I have a better idea. Can you invent something that's only 30 pounds uh, it's the radius of this room and it jams bad ideas. <laughs> That's a good shiver. Anyway, so so we went out there and uh, we got in the birds um, and then we took off and we left. And we had um we had a, a 90 minute flight into into his house. We now we actually had we had more birds behind us. There was actually uh blue team guys in 47 in Chinooks behind us. Uh 45 minutes. And then there was more on the border with Rangers and then there was more Oh, wow. Because the word I got, I wasn't there, and this is some South Side Chicago fucking politics, was when they told um, President Obama our plan that, like, yeah, they're going to get here. The first, if they get contact with the PAC mill or the PAC police, we're going to hard point. Uh, we don't want to get in a shootout with them because they're not our enemy, and then you can send someone to negotiate with the Pakistanis and pull them out. And he goes, that's interesting. Hmm. And then he looked at the chief of staff of the Air Force and said, what do you need to rain hell on Pakistan? My guys aren't fucking surrendering to anybody. No shit. And that's what I heard, and that's pretty cool. And that, and that was so. This is a mission now where politics is out the window, and then you got to figure President Obama, he's going to lose re-election if we all die, and and that not that that matters, but does to him. Yeah. But he's making the fucking call because this is what we're going to do. So um so we're so we have birds behind us. Like if we need to get, um if we need a, a QR an IRF and a QRF, we got our guys coming in, and we're fucking we're fighting, and we I know we have shit above us but they didn't really tell us because we got enough on our plate like i'm assuming someone that's invisible has some bombs up so we're flying in 90 minutes to get into bin laden's house and um um we can get shot down now at any time we don't know if this technology works we don't know if the the most high speed pakistani new guy is manning the radar system pointing that way and he'll shoot us down and we can't even be mad at him because we're invading yeah um but worrying about that missile isn't going to stop it. So if you're worrying about something that it doesn't stop worrying, you're wasting your energy. If we die, we die. And so I'm looking around at other guys in this bird. How are they handling it? And dudes are sleeping. And I remember thinking you were asleep on the ride to Bin Laden's house. You have ice in your veins, man. That's just fucking insane. Uh, and I'm I'm sitting next to Cairo, the dog, and then Cheese. The, he wrote the book No Ordinary Dog. Uh, they're back there and uh, Cairo's just, you know, being a good boy. And, and uh, I was counting to keep, I learned in Kosovo as a sniper to count. When you're, when you got, when you're glassing something and you just count. Zero to a thousand, thousand to zero, and then change your cadence, keep your mind working, but keep focused. And, um, you know, we're, about, we're like 90 minutes in, or 80 minutes into a 90 minute flight and we banked to the, to the south. And I don't know how I remembered it, but I, I was counting 556, 557. Freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward and freedom will be defended. You know, and, you know, politics, whatever. That's what George Bush said on 9-11. And I was like, shit, I'm going to keep saying that. And then it's like, wow, we're, I'm on this mission. We're on this mission. We're going to fucking kill him. So we, we did another bank. And then uh, the air crew guys opened the door. And now we're looking out. It's not even, And that's something they don't get credit for. The air crew guys, they put their asses in those seats, too. If we get shot down, they're dying as well. And their job was to keep the bird flying and open the fucking door. What if we couldn't figure out how to open the door? Something that simple. He yeah. knew how to do it. He opens it up. Now it's it's a Abbottabad, Pakistan is a resort town, and there's electricity. This is not a training area. This is not Afghanistan. This is some serious Navy SEAL shit we're about to do. So the perfect plan was I was in the second bird. The first bird's going to go right in between Bin Laden's house and the and the um, guest house. They're going to fast rope everyone out. We're going to insert a sniper, um, some snipers, a dog, an interpreter, and a machine gun. Then my team's going to go to the roof. We're going to fast rope down onto the roof, and then we're going to figure out how to get to the balcony. And basically, that's, I'm going to fucking jump. And I'm, I'm going to shoot it out. There's probably a window there. Bin Laden's in the, the woman told me, third floor, Bin Laden is in his house. 
and that's what's going to happen. And then it went to shit because I guess there was an updraft. There was it, the, the weather was different or something, and the the pilot realized that if he um, if uh, an inexperienced pilot would have tried to power it up, and that would have flipped it or something. He explained that later. He said the safest thing now, if I can if I can pin it to the ground and the, that put the tail on the on the fence, we could live. So he did that, and he saved everyone's lives just making that decision. Shit. And it was on purpose. Um, and then our so we took off to go to the roof, but our pilot now the communications is kind of sketch here. Um, our pilot saw him do that, and he realized that well, shit, if he can't hover, I'm not trying up there. So he just went back down. So all we know is we went up and we came down, and the pilot's basically saying, "Get out." And I remember putting my my first foot came out. I'm looking up in Laden's house, and I remember thinking, "Fuck it, I guess we'll start the war from here." And I knew damn well there's a um, there's a wall just because we trained so much. There's a door on the wall, northeast corner, which is off to my left. And so the breacher decided to go up and put a, a seven foot charge of C six on it. So we're so now because we're hitting this side, they're somewhere in there. I think we're gonna go into the house this way, and we can just we can go up with them. Uh, he blasted the door. It opened like a tin can. And there's a brick wall behind it. So on the wall, there's a wall, and a, and the breacher said, "All right, failed breach. This is this is bad." He said, "No, this is good. That that's a that's a fake door. Nobody does that. He's he's in there." So then we're, we know there's another door over here, which is the carport, which we know opens because the cars go in and out. And we didn't know what happened. We we heard them saying dash one going around, but what they were saying was dash one going down. So we just gave him a courtesy, hey, we're going to blast the carport. And they said, don't blast it, we'll open it. And the door opened and the thumb came out with a glove that I recognized. And that now we're at a point in life where it doesn't matter why you're here, you just are. Yeah. I tell football teams that all the time. It doesn't matter why it's second and 15, it just is. Time's kicking, let's move. So we walk in. Um, it didn't make sense to me why they're in there. I saw the air crew standing there. I saw American flags, but different... Um, you different gear. And I, I remember thinking, who the fuck are these guys? Whatever. And so we're, there's already a gunfight. Stuff's going on. Uh, explosions. We go into the main house. Um, uh, there's guys going down the hallway. This is the first floor of Bin Laden's house. And we're backed into this uh, into this room. And I'm, I'm like looking around for bombs. Like I, they're, they're going to blow this house up. If anyone's going to martyr himself, it's Bin Laden. I don't see any. But I'm seeing guys knowing that they could blow up, but they're not. it's not affecting them. They're doing their jobs. And uh, being proud of them. Like this is just, you guys are fucking cool. And uh, uh, the guy next to me in the room, he, he whispered and he said, helicopter crashed. And I said, what helicopter? And I thought some of the birds behind us had crashed. But he said, bro, our helicopter crashed in the front yard. You walked right past it. Holy shit. And it's like, okay, that, that, makes, that's make, that makes sense. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.